What is going on? Charles Bootenston here, and today we're going to be talking about systems. We're going to be talking about a couple things that you know you may want to change. Obviously, when it comes to habits, when it comes to your life, when it comes to your relationships, we've talked about it without end on this channel. So this is the biggest thing that I want to bring up is that, um, and I've talked about it a couple of times. You know, I was just invited potentially, fingers crossed. Uh, on a stage, potentially in front of a couple people. In other words, a, a large audience. It's gonna be my first speaking engagement, so I'm gonna be a little bit fearful. And that's obviously the words that I use. That's going through my mind. You know, how I use my words is what I actually create in real life, whether you believe that or not. We're gonna be talking about getting lost in life. So in other words, the way that we think about things, whether we like it or we don't like it, you know, Ryan Serhan had a great post on Instagram. And actually, this is probably one of the better videos, especially, as a guy going through society where the figures, uh, the male figures, are they as good as what they could be? No. Could they be better? Absolutely. Is there any way, you know, as Joseph Campbell talks about, going from boyhood to manhood, there, there is nothing in society. You know, obviously, uh, if you're a Jewish boy you go, or a girl, you go through bar and bat mitzvah, you know, where you become a man, or you become a man, but still, it's, it's, there's no actual event, okay? Teenager, the word teenager was actually invented most recently, because within the last 100, 100, I think within the last 100 years, you know, I think within the last 50 years. And essentially, it was between up until about 13 before you became an adult, which was around 22, you know, or 18. You know, that, that six years of just becoming who you should, becoming your own, within your own, questioning life, questioning your beliefs, you know, getting everything out of you. In other words, all the boyhood, getting all the, the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement out of you, especially as a male, you know, the aggression and things like that. And this is what I boiled it down to is that if you don't get that out of you, you go to college, and if you don't get it out of you at college, and then you go through the normal way of life of graduating college, going through your 20s, and then you're in your 30s, say early 30s or late 20s, and people start saying, hey listen, you should get married. Hey listen, you should have kids, even as women, you know. Obviously they have a biological clock, and we usually date down in age. Women usually date up, or they're same age. They rarely date down, and the reason being is that they want someone that is financially resourceful. They wanna make sure that that person is mature. They wanna make sure that that person is ready for the commitment of marriage. And for obvious reasons is that, you know, obviously back in the day, it was a little bit worse than it is now is the financial resources weren't there for women okay so today we're gonna to be talking about men and getting lost in life you're seeing it more and more and the reason being is you know this is the best way to put it is that if you don't have a mission if you don't have a, uh, a belief that what you do matters then you're essentially going through life and there is no meaning okay you're essentially in nihilism is essentially going through and why am I even doing anything? Why does this all matter? Why why am I even here? You know, what's what's the meaning? And you take that and you go to your 30s. Perfect. Okay, that's not a bad deal. You're still getting started in your career. You start seeing friends getting, you know, making more money. They get married. They have kids and everything else. Then you start hitting your mid-30s. Then you start hitting your late 30s. Then you go into 40. And then by now, potentially, you have, you know, multiple kids. You've been settled into maybe the same house, maybe the same life, maybe the same job, maybe the same career. Then, you, then they call it the midlife crisis because they don't have. They they look at their life and they say, this is how it is. And this is how it's always gonna be. So in other words, when you're lost in life, it's usually when you've been doing the exact same monotonous thing and you see what you're doing may not matter. It may not have any effect on society, on yourself, on your family, on your kids. It doesn't really matter. And listen, I'm 33, I'm not married. I can't speak to being lost. In other words, being where the place is where you start saying, you start questioning everything. You start questioning, you know, the way you're doing things, the, your weekend plans, your daily plans, the grind, going to work. But I see it down on the streets and I hear it all the time between clients and people that I'm friends with and, and I see it in their faces, I see it in their body language. And it, you could be young, okay, and, and start thinking this. You know, there's there's a lot of girls that I'm, I'm seeing right now or and or friends with that they're saying, why am I even working so hard when, you know, in the future I could be married and we're 
we're, are we gonna have a dual income? All right, so let's get to the point. Number one is you have to have two things. A foundation, your actual life, okay? A foundation means something that you build upon, okay? A foundation is you have morals, ethics, beliefs, okay? That's internal, I mean external things. External things of the, the actual foundation should be built on health because if you do not build your life on health, you don't have the, number one, it's hard, okay? So it takes discipline, okay? Number two is you may not see the consequences now. You will actually not see the consequences now. You will see the consequences when you're 55 or 65 or 75. You know, even, even earlier, if you're running too hard, if you're, you're going too hard, you see all these offensive linemen in the NFL that they're dying too early or these, you see all these guys going through life and they just, they're, they're, they're broken when it comes down to their physical health. So the number one thing is your physical health. Okay, on top of that, you have your relationships. Relationships are with the people around you. And the reason being is that as you grow old, you wanna either grow old with someone, I highly recommend that, because you need someone to take care of you as you're growing older. I have multiple clients, I know a lot of people that as they grow older, they don't have anyone around them. They don't have a brother, they don't have a sister, they don't have a spouse, they don't have any kids, and they're essentially just growing old by themselves. Fine, that's great, but the problem is you want that, you need that, and there's study after study is that the, the people that surround themselves with loving and caring people, whether it's family, it's society, whether it's a tribe, it doesn't really matter, is that you need someone to take care of you, you need someone to banter with, you need something to look forward to, and the study after study talks about that those people that don't have it, they live shorter lives by a lot. We're social creatures, that's how we survive. Mother Nature said, this is the only way to survive. So the first one is health. You have to get that established. This year or next year, read up on it. Educate yourself. What you put in your body, what you put on your body. Then you have relationships. Relationships are three areas. Number one is obviously with yourself. You have the relationship with yourself. You have a relationship with the immediate people. So in other words, they call that the unit, the family unit, whether that's a spouse, that's kids, you know, whether it's your neighbor, it doesn't matter, wherever you are, your immediate tribe, okay? Then you start going further beyond that with friends, family, cousins, work, okay? So number one is foundation, because if you can't take care of yourself and you have no one to take care of you, then you go to relationships. And then from there, you go from wealth, okay? Wealth is essentially gonna top down. If you take care of this, your happiness will come. People wanna, they, they wanna go and they wanna have the outcome of happiness. There is no outcome of happiness. You could choose happiness, or you could just be guaranteed happiness by taking care of yourself, taking care of yourself with others, and then taking care of yourself financially. In other words, you build your, your health foundation, you build your relationship foundation, and then on top of that, you build your wealth foundation. Most people have the wealth foundation, and then they sacrifice the, their family, they sacrifice their health. Some people put their, their relationships before everything else. That's fantastic, but the problem is, when you're actually growing old, and you're obese, and you're fat, and no one can take care of you, or you can't play with your kids, your health is the problem. And your health, if it becomes a problem, I know too many people that unfortunately they didn't have the resources, they didn't take care of their health, and then something happened. The biggest bankruptcy problem in the United States is actually from medical bills, okay? So you have to take care of, obviously, your health, relationships, and then moving on, uh, money, and then happiness follows. So let's break it down to daily, monthly, quarterly, okay? So daily, what are you doing on a daily basis? I cannot stress the self-awareness, not beating yourself up, but just being aware, of what am I doing? What are the decisions I'm, I'm making? Am I snoozing my alarm? When I snooze my alarm or I get out of bed, what am I doing first? Am I looking at my phone? Am I looking at social media? Is my phone on airplane mode? Did I have a good night of sleep? Am I excited to get out of bed? Am I excited to go to work? Am I going to the gym? Am I not going to the gym? Am I drinking coffee? What, do I, what are my actual routines leading up to the day when I'm at work? This is the self-awareness that makes you first just take inventory of what you're doing, okay? What is the cause and effect of everything? You have something wrong with you. The doctor prescribes you some medication. The problem is you're not getting to the root cause, okay? You're fat and overweight. You're not getting to the root cause of going to the gym or put, what are you putting in your body? How much are you actually moving during the day? I have a standing desk right here in front of me. It's very expensive, but I know that my back is always gonna be strong, it's probably gonna be straight, and the reason being, when you sit, your abs start going, your back starts going, then you start having issues, then you start recorrecting it one way or the other. I'm not gonna be that person, okay? I noticed the importance of health when I noticed that it's gonna ruin your relationships if 
you have no, ruin all the relationships with your kids, with your spouse, with your family, with society, with work. If you don't have the energy or you don't have the enthusiasm, if you're not financially secure on top of that. But the problem is, if you're not financially secure, that's fine if, as long as you're taking care of yourself, okay? There's a lot of people that take care of themselves and they can just run outside. Last thing is, so what are you doing daily? What are you doing weekly? And then um, that all adds up. I'm gonna, incredible book, I'm gonna be doing a book review on some uh, an incredible book called Atomic Habits. Okay, Atomic Habit is the micro unit. When we talk about the micro unit in society, people think of the nation, or they think of the state, or they think of maybe their political party. It starts with you. What are you doing? Are you holding the door? Are you cleaning up your room? Are you making your bed, as Jordan Peterson talks about? Or how are you doing? Then move to the second area. How's your family? How's your relationships? How's with your kids, your family, and everything else? Then move out from there. Most people want to change the nation without actually looking at their own life and saying, holy shit, it's a mess. And the last word I wrote was rudderless. If you don't have meaning and you are lost, you have to start with the foundation of health, okay? Health, I'm telling you right now, because it takes discipline, it makes you feel good, it clears out your head, it clears out your body, it, it, it makes you enjoy life, you're happy, you're excited, because you're doing something that's not easy. And there's obviously, when, when you actually go to the gym, like today's gym session was so hard. I was, I was pooped when I left, I had no energy, but boom, your body recovers in the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you put uh, oatmeal in your body, I put a little organic protein as well so that builds up the muscles, that also allows me for the recovering, then I go right into work. This is something that I've dialed down because I said, okay, what am I doing on a daily basis? Where, where is my outcome gonna happen? If you have no outcome, you are rudderless. If you are rudderless and you have no meaning, you're done. You're done, why am I here? What am I doing? Why am I, I'm not even affecting people. Giving is living. You know, as Tony Robbins says, the secret to living is giving. You know, whatever quote you wanna use, you have to take inventory on your body. You have to take inventory on your relationships. You have to take inventory on your wealth. Wealth is the last thing. Unfortunately, most people put their relationships first. Most people put their, their money first. And, the, and I'll just leave you on this. The reason that I don't put relationships first because I have two friends. I, I have a, a friend's father who's very large and now his wife is taking care of him because he put his wealth first, he put his relationship first, he put his relationship first. In other words, he went out to Vegas and he was drinking and eating for decades and now he's obese, he's massive. He uh, cannot take care of himself and his wife has to take care of himself. Do you think she's excited to be in her later years taking care of her husband because he's obese? Not because he's aging, but because he's obese. As well, that same person was not actually throwing the ball around with his son. That's the thing. They, the father and the son relationship, it's good, but it could have been better because the guy was so big, he couldn't throw the ball around, he couldn't move around, he couldn't climb mountains, he couldn't go, he couldn't do the things that, you know, throw, it, football, baseball, it doesn't really matter, hockey, he couldn't do the things that he would normally want to do with his son. It's just because he got too tired and then after a while, he just wasn't able to do it. He had a cane, he had a wheelchair, now he just can't even move. It's, 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 a, it's unfortunate because he put the relationships of everyone else in his life, then he put his wealth first, but he didn't focus on health at all. So the base and the foundation is taking care of your health. Once you have that, then you move on to relations. Once you have that, then you move on to wealth. Because if you're taking care of your money, but you're not taking care of the relationships, you're getting through a divorce and everything else. And, and the top tier where everyone wants to aim is happiness. But, but the problem is, is that number one is choice. And number two is that you can't just choose happiness if this is all a, a mess. You can, you're kind of deluding yourself. And you're also really just in, in that personal development just framework of just cyclical going around and just saying, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, and you're going around at the top, but you're not actually taking care of the areas that you need. Take inventory, see where you wanna go, have the daily discipline that I'm gonna be talking about in Atomic Habits. And obviously, if this is your first video, go, go down, leave your comments, subscribe to the video. Tomorrow we're gonna be talking about criticism, 
everyone gets it all the time. I get it. I just got an, uh, an email yesterday of a client that said, please, why are you not on time? Or I asked for feedback and they, they gave me criticism of being on time. It wasn't me, it was one of my agents. But that's gonna happen all the time. They were like two minutes late or three minutes late. And listen, they're still late. I'm not making an excuse, but what I'm saying is you're gonna get that, whether it's deserving or not deserving. So we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. Have an amazing day. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Subscribe to the video. Talk to you soon.